all right, just shoot him when you're yeah. ready. Just shoot him. Yeah. His head's down. Just shoot him when you're ready. And um, so he pulls the trigger and it was weird. It was like, um, like a, almost a double shot, like a this segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Leopold, American to the core. Hey everybody, happy new year. It's episode 190 of the Jury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast. I am Tim Chelsvik. I am Matt Drury and let's do it. This is a new year. We, uh, we're starting to look at kind of the year in numbers of how 2020 finished out and you know, the podcast actually was a little bit of a bright spot. Let's not act surprised. Let's just be cool and go with <laughs> the it. The podcast did what we expected. <laughs> of course it did. So I think we're gaining steam actually and I, you know, I, I think it's more than anything, it's because we just keep pushing it down people's throats. <laughs> yes. We're not extremely talented, but we show up. That's right. And that's half the battle. Hey, it is, man. Mm-hmm. You know, that just showing up is, it, could, it says a lot about somebody. Uh-huh. Either you're <laughs> annoying or... They don't know when to quit. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, one thing I was thinking, we should probably, for our new listeners, if they don't know where the 100% wild comes from in our title, we should probably give them a little backstory on that so they're in the loop. Yeah. So, uh, man, I wish you would have gave me a heads up because I would have looked. We got a plaque over here on the other side of the office. And so it's a trademark, it's a registered trademark that Mark and Terry got probably in the. I'd say mid nineties, maybe okay. late nineties. And it was a hundred percent wild, a hundred percent fair chase. And at that time that they had always hunted that way. But at that time, I think there was, um, I, I think there were, were some things happening in the industry, maybe no feathers or there, there's some, some drama happening where it was coming into question whether or not some people were hunting fair like chase or not, yeah, yeah, high fence or fair chase. And so, uh, they had always hunted that way. And so they registered that, that mark a hundred percent wild, a hundred percent fair chase. And that was heck through, through our video series. We had a video series titled that for a long time. And it was always kind of a how to, uh, you know, one, one year it might've been on food plots. One year it might've been mm-hmm. on a uh, tree stand placement. You know, there's always one year on calling. There was always each year, a new, a uh, topic that they would dive into. We sure. did 10 of those. And then once we hit 10, the hundred percent wild series was just kind of a, generally speaking, an informative video series that we had. Uh, but that name in general is something that we've always kind of stuck. It's been close to us and, and we've always used in some form or fashion. So when we came up, you know, when, when we were coming up with names for the podcast, back when even Kenyon was involved in it, uh, Mark Drury su- suggested that we go with that hundred percent wild hundred percent, you know, white toe madness is a registered trademark. Dream season's a registered trademark, you know, bow madness. I can go on and on. But as we were thinking about things, I, I thought, the hundred percent wild would, would kind of make sense. And it would cover a lot of different things, not just whitetail, not just Turkey. It would cover us from any, anything obviously in the wild. So mm-hmm. that's why we went with that, uh, with that name. And we are, I mean, we're known for our Taryn sets up and yeah, we're a wild PG 13 language. You got two young kids at home. I got two young kids at well, home. We, yeah. we're we, real crazy. We, we live in the wildlife. Two wild and crazy guys. <laughs> That's right. I love, I love that sketch. Yeah. It's an old, it's, it's like a mid 80s. Yeah, we're dating ourselves here. Big time, big time. But it's just important that folks know like the, 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 the name of the show is kind of an homage to our history, 31 plus years of history For sure. and, and also just kind of, that's how we operate. Yeah. So, uh, you know, before we move on, I want to say thanks for all the, the people that are subscribing to the podcast, obviously anywhere podcasts are available. You can, you can subscribe there or, uh, you can watch on YouTube or over in Deercast. And, uh, if you, you know, get the wild hair, share it with your friends or let them know about it. And, uh, we really appreciate it. That stuff goes a long way and it means a lot to us. Speaking so. of appreciation, I, uh, I got this cool little thank you card from uh, a couple of the rugrats in my neighborhood. So it, my, my, my backyard in the summertime, both my kids have bows and <laughs> apparently all the other neighbor kids have bows also. And they all come over and I'm like, summer camp director all over that again. That makes sense to me. <laughs> Supervising the archery <laughs> session. Yeah. There's arrows flinging all over in the backyard. Uh, but James and Nolan got a couple uh, Dre Outdoors DVDs for Christmas this year. Nice. And uh, and 
they wanted to thank me for them. So they, they wrote me this card. It says, thanks for the hunting movies. Happy New Year, Nolan, and love James. And they drew a picture that could be Rudolph. I think it's Rudolph. Yeah. Or it could be like a lung shot buck and he's <laughs> bleeding out of his mouth. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Either way, I like it. those kids are awesome. They're huge deer hunters and they're uh, Brandon and Karen. Their mom and dad are starting them out right. Good deal. Need more of it. Speaking of more of, let's have some more shout outs. All right, let's do it. Want me to take the first one? Yeah. All right. So each week we uh, we give a few shout outs to some of the listeners or viewers that uh, leave us some comments. So this one's from Craig Cooper. He left it over on DeerCast. Thanks for a great season of podcast, fellas. I live in Dallas area, but I hunt in Kansas, so I would binge listen on my eight hour drives. Poor guy. It definitely <laughs> helped the time go by. My only thing on the TV show 13, lose the extreme close ups with the ring light. Honestly, that's a bad look, especially on old man Terry. Man, brutal. Craig. <laughs> I actually, that feedback we get every once in a while. It's either on 13, the only two things they complain about is either Mother Nature's voice or the ring light and what that reflection does in her oh, eyes. Yeah. I don't think, I think they'd be surprised. I think the, the, the look is more our graphics guru puts kind of a filter effect to it uh, in post-production. I think it's more of that that makes Terry look old. We're, we're going with that. <laughs> Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Jerry Wells over on YouTube said, great wrap up to a horrendous year for so many, but hopefully a great whitetail season for everyone. Great job to the DOD team. All that right. was in reference to our last show in 2020. All righty. Well, so, you know, over the Christmas break here, you know, I, we, we, the studios closed between Christmas and New Year's. And so it gives guys a chance to go home if they live out of town or a chance to go hunting if you still got a tag mm -hmm. or, you know, and my uh, nephew, he, uh, he enlisted into the Air Force um, and joined in June, I think it was. So June of 2020, okay. he, he went into the Air Force straight out of high school. And uh, he hasn't been home since, since he's enlisted. And, uh, so he had told my sister Kelly that he wasn't going to be able to come home due to coronavirus and kind of lockdowns or whatever. Okay. They weren't going to allow the, the airmen to go home. And so that was true for maybe a day or two or something. And then, and then he just kind of rolled with that. And it was a surprise that, you know, he was going to be actually coming home for Christmas. So she was the only one, obviously not in on the surprise. All the mm -hmm. rest of us knew it. We went over to her house for a, a little Christmas. It was, I think the day before Christmas, uh, and, and went over, for a little dinner and she was it was hilarious because she was she was so mad because her husband sean kept inviting people over to christmas and she hadn't <laughs> prepared they didn't have enough oh. food you know like she wasn't prepared for all these guests yeah so like i showed up and this is probably 45 minutes south of my house and which is 45 minutes south of the studio and sure so she she's like i walk in and she's like you could just tell she was annoyed <laughs> oh, at her another husband. one. Like, and so, so, which, which, I mean, by the way, guys do have a tendency for throwing monkeys into a monkey wrench into the works. Well, and I have a tendency to just show up for a free meal anyway. So, <laughs> I, it wasn't out of the totally out of. I, I, was, like in, I was like, well, Sean said you guys were cooking pork steaks, Jeez. you know. So, you know, I had to have a reason to be there. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, so we're sitting there and we had all known obviously that what time he was going to walk in and all that. So I kind of sure. had my phone ready and I was able to video him walking in the door. <laughs> it was an awesome video. It, 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 it was like, it blew up for me on Instagram. Like people just ate it up. They loved it. And it's, you know, those homecoming videos for, for service men and women are always great. Yeah. So anyways, I, I start on the door. He comes through the front door. She's got her head in the oven and she's like, hold on, I got to get this, you know, she cusses out of the oven and, and uh, she wasn't, you know, her head was down. She wasn't looking up. And so all of a sudden he goes, he says something, Hey mom, or what, what you making? Or that smells good or something like that. And she, her head pops up right away and instantly, you know, that voice she uh, knew and, I love it. and she starts crying and she says, you know, this is, I prayed for this every day since you've been gone. Yeah. It was, it was just a really cool moment. And, um, so anyways, he was home for 10 days, roughly 10 days. Okay. And, uh, we had talked about maybe taking him up to 
dad's farm, but that's a, you know, three and a half, four hours away from where he, where his mom lives. And we just, I wanted to try to get him on a hunt, but have him able to go home the at time night. time is precious. Exactly. Yeah. Like we didn't, I, we didn't want to steal him away from, from my sister for a couple of days. And so anyhow, so, um, Christmas, I guess it would have been a couple of days after Christmas is when my mom has her Christmas for our immediate mm-hmm. family. And so we were sitting there on, I think it was a Saturday maybe or sun, no Sunday. And, uh, anyways, I'm like, Hey, you know, if you want, if you guys, if you feel like it, I got a deer that, you know, I'd been after I passed him a couple times, but he's kind of the only deer that's, that's of maturity on, on the farm. And sure. I think we got a good shot of seeing him tomorrow night. Let's go up and try it out. So him and his buddy, Jordan, his best friend from high school, you know, cause they, they hadn't seen each other either for, you know, months on okay. end. So they're, they're both big, avid outdoorsmen. They love hunting. They love the lifestyle. They're, mm-hmm. you know, they just, they eat it up. So one of the other things we had purchased a brand new, uh, VX, no, yeah, VXR for, for Nolan. Okay. And so he went up to Mike's to, I had called ahead and, and said, Hey, Mike, he's got, you know, limited time. Any way you can help him out here. So he went and him and his buddy, Jordan, were getting his bow worked on. Well, that's okay. only 45 minutes from the lease yeah. or, and, and from the river farm. So I said, Hey, while you're up there, let's then continue to go and head up and hunt the, the <laughs> property that night. So anyhow, um, they made a trip to Cabela's and Bass Pro and Mike's. It's all kind of within. Yeah. Well, they had a hell of a morning. <laughs> and uh, then we met up at the farm and we got out there. It's funny to hunt with, you know, they're uh, millennials. I guess, I don't know. Maybe they're younger than that. I guess 18. The, what's that considered? Yeah. Now? No, that's not a millennial. That's, next, that's I don't remember what that is, but it's a different generation. Generation down. Well, anyhow, so hopefully the people that correct some of them, <laughs> the millennials. Yeah. Well, they, it was funny to hunt with them because I know these guys are, they love hunting. They eat, you know, sleep, breathe it, yeah. but they're on their phones a lot. And I'm on my phone in the blind a decent amount. If I got signal, to, you know, waiting for time to pass, but mm-hmm. it was f- interesting to hunt with them. And it's a different mindset. It is a little bit of a different mindset. And I, of course, knew the, and they didn't know the deer. They, I had sent Nolan pictures of the deer we were after the deep eight. Yeah. And I had an encounter with him with my bow a couple of weeks ago with Scott. And we had talked about on the last podcast, like, so I, that's the deer. He had a 50, 50 chance of being in this cul-de-sac plot that we, we have uh-huh. where a muddy bulls up on a keen trailer, or he was going to be in this T plot that we encountered him in a couple of weeks ago, okay. a 50, 50 chance, one of the two. And I had tons of reconnex pictures of him on both. So, you know, I, I, I had a pretty good chance he was going to be in one of them. Okay. So anyhow, so I'm anxiously kind of waiting and plus I'm filming, which I'm not a great camera guy. I'm not, you know, it just, you know, I'm doing my best. It's to, a skill. It is. That, you know, Scott and those guys are great at what they do. And, and so, you know, so I'm filming as much as I can, but I'm also looking as much as I can. So I'm putting <laughs> because the camera no one down. else is. <laughs> well, they, they do for about a second. And then it's funny because I, I kind of paid attention to it and they're, looking with my eyes, it's like, I see their thumbs or continue to swipe, sw- uh, you know, scroll up, yeah. scroll up, scroll up. Eyes look up for a minute. Their thumbs are still scrolling. They come back down. It's possible. It's- those guys have grown up hunting with phones. It may, maybe they may have, I know, you they're 18, like the, 19 years the past years old. 10 years or whatever that yeah. it's just a, a different world. Yeah. So, so anyway, so I knew where the deer should be coming out from and I'm, I'm paying attention and a few does come out and mm-hmm. you know, so it's, it's starting off decent. We're seeing some good, decent dope movement. It was, it was a cold day and I had a feeling they were going to hit these biologic radishes. We had a couple uh, hard frosts. And so those sugars are starting to kind of, you know, break down and, mm-hmm. and the, all the turnips and all the radishes and all the, I mean, everything's kind of eaten the, like the browse pressure was insane just over the last couple of weeks, how much they're hitting it. Sure. And, um, so anyway, so they're starting to kind of come out all around us and we probably saw four or five does and, and then all of a sudden, um, uh, a couple came out and went behind us and they got downwind, but we're in that trailer. I'm like, I'm saying like five, 10 feet behind us, mm-hmm. like all around us. And I'm like, all right, guys quit, you know, don't shift your weight because in those, in that keen trailer, it's a pop, it pops up uh-huh. and it's stable, but you know, you still, when you, when you shift your weight pretty, pretty good, it's going to 
you're going to get feel a vibration of movement in yeah. it. And uh, the, the deer, I know they can hear that right below us. You, you know what I mean? So, you know, so we kind of pass that test and they kind of filter out and get past us okay, finally. Good. And then all of a sudden a couple, you know, a little bit later, a few spikes come out, a fork comes out and uh, you know so all of a sudden it's like man it's starting to pick up here a nice young buck came out from behind us and i mean we got deer all over us and what, and what time was that oh probably a little after four four it they started movement probably started 3 30 but really around four okay picked up so you got about you an know. hour of shooting yeah, light yeah light. four four thirty four thirty is when it really i told these guys i was like i think you know half hour 45 minutes that left lasts. it's yeah. you know they're gonna really start hammering this and so boy this out of nowhere the buck that we were after a deep eight he comes out of this little road that that the deer file from the bedding area out in this road into the food plot okay. and he you know it's like hey here he is it's you know it was Game a, on. it was a weird deal because it was actually something that I thought could happen, happened. <laughs> it's almost like, you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I felt like Mark or Terry, you know, like I'm guiding your someone, guide. Yeah. <laughs> which is comical to say the least. Like just play cool, man. Yeah, play yeah. cool. Yeah. So, uh, so the deer comes out, he come, he, you know, probably at 30 yards there when he walks out and then he walks down the edge of that biologic and there are does all around us, 15 yards, 10 yards, you know, 40 yards there. So the, the biggest problem is always trying to get when you're hunting out of a blind line, like that is just trying to get a window open uh -huh. and not have you know 30 eyeballs catch you and all look up yeah so it's kind of tense because i'm like get your gun ready and i i you know i didn't know if he was going to be nervous or what his to me because it it was a really good deer and uh you know you never know it'd be the biggest deer of his life so i didn't know what kind of excitement level he was sure having in, inside so i'm like all right slow the game down and and so let's start getting the window to where you can open it and then all of a sudden the deer froze because i i guarantee a doe is probably catching us and uh -huh. she popped her head up so he pops his head up and he's looking around were and, you nervous at uh, this point being yeah, the camera guy a little bit more more of Pete Shapley always used to say when the, something like this happens, you got to give yourself a job, right? Mm -hmm. Give yourself something to do. Well, when you're the, the outfitter, the <laughs> scout, the camera guy, like I had plenty to do, on. you know, cause I'm also turning on secondary cameras, point yeah. of view cameras. We had a tact cam on his gun. We had a couple verbs in the blind plus the big camera. So I'm turning cameras on as well. Just making sure that hopefully something catches sure. <laughs> the action here. And, uh, so the deer comes out, you know, he finally puts his head down and he starts walking again. No one gets the window open and he gets the gun out out the the window and um, settles in and deer's guys head down. Usually we try to get the deer to lift the, their head before mm -hmm. we shoot. It just always looks good on camera. They raise their head up. Yeah. You stop them. Yeah. But I was, I was so nervous about the, just generally speaking, all the deer out there. I was like, yeah, all right, just shoot him when you're yeah. ready. Just shoot <laughs> yeah. him. His head's down. Just shoot him when you're ready. And um, so he pulls the trigger and it was weird. It was like, um, like a almost a double shot, like a, and it was it was such a weird, you know, we were shooting huh. a traditions muzzle loader, and and it was not the nitro fire because they're they're not legal in Missouri yet. Yeah. So if, during the muzzle loader season, we have gotten word that they are, are going to be next year already. Oh great, yeah. So that's great news. Yeah. But anyway, so I was using my striker fire vortex, and um, I, I hadn't shot it much you know, last time I shot it was, and I know you shouldn't do this and usually I don't, but I just kind of got behind in the late season here. My nitro fire was sighted in great, <laughs> but the, the, the other gun, last time I shot it, I killed two S two with it. Gotcha. So, you know, it goes straight into the safe and straight out. So I thought I'd be okay with it and same exact powder and all that. Well, I think what happened was the breech plug maybe wasn't totally clear like when you get to finish cleaning a muzzle loader you really need to be able to see when you hold that breech plug up you need to be able to see daylight through a little pinhole okay. and i just think maybe it will it had gotten a little not corroded but gunked up sure over that year sitting in the safe and it delayed the primer from like the instantaneous hitting the powder yeah. and, and throwing that charge out there so anyways all that being said there was that slight delay he i think 
pulled just a little bit. Cause I know like personally, as I was filming it, I ended up my, like out of the corner of my eyes, I shifted my eyes from the looking at the screen to yeah, looking like, at the gun, up? like what's, what's going on all within a nanosecond. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it goes off and he shoots the deer drops. I, you know, shake a little bit on the, on the shot there. Cause I really wasn't ready for it. Cause I was looking at the gun <laughs> thinking what the heck's going yeah. on here. Well, anyways, he shoots it, he drops it. Turns out he ended up, he had ended up hitting it right behind the ear. He dropped, he dropped. I mean, it's pure luck because it was probably a foot and a half away from the shot was probably a foot and a half to the left from where he was aiming. Okay. You know, where the, the buck's head was eating and I, we just got lucky, you know, and I thought back about it and I was telling dad this on our, on my drive back home that night. I, you know, people, we think about this a lot on these catch a dream hunts, like strange things, I mean, strange things have happened. You wonder if it's a coincidence or not. Yeah, on these catch dream hunts. And I'm not, you know, huge think overthinking things like that. But I've seen it on these catch dream hunts plenty of times where these kids shouldn't have shot these, you know, killed these deer and they drop them. And, you know, it's just amazing things have happened. Well, anyways, I, I started thinking about this deer and I'm like, you know, I passed him a couple of times during the gun season, one time at like 15 yards, right? Mm-hmm. Where Scott killed his buck. Uh, we almost had a chance with our bow, you know, a couple of weeks ago and literally would have stepped 10 more feet. He would have been dead. And I just yeah. kind of thought like, Oh, maybe, you know, maybe this deer was meant to live to make it for Nolan to have a chance to shoot him. Yeah. You know, he had a short amount of time. And, and when I was telling dad all this, he's like, yeah, that's, that's Ralph grandpa, you know, Mark <laughs> Terry's dad, pulling the strings, just kind of yeah. looking over us. And it was, it was cool. It was a good moment. And no one, you know, was happy as could be. It was his biggest deer ever. He was a, he's a mainframe eight point. It was clean eight point that, uh, he went, I think they taped him at like one thirty six and some change Sweet. And biggest deer of his life. Yeah. Five and a half year old buck. I mean, it was the last good deer I had on two different pieces uh-huh. of property and it was kind of meant to be. So it turned yeah. out to be a great, a great break him and his buddy, his buddy, Jordan. I mean, he was shaking so bad, <laughs> you know, and he was just That's there awesome. watching and yeah. his, his leg, I was saying when you like shift your weight in those blinds, it, it kind of moves it. Uh-huh. He was moving the blind. His <laughs> legs were shaking. He's like, I'm so yeah. excited that, you know, he was genuinely excited for sure. his buddy. And it was a good, it was a good uh, feel good kind of a moment. And it, it's cool with hindsight to look back over the season and yeah. see all those kind of seemingly individual circumstances come together to get Nolan on a gray buck in a very short amount of time yeah. on a very limited window that he had to hunt. Yeah, it was, it was cool. And I, I had looked back just before the Christmas break, Scott and I were looking at some of the Reconyx pictures I've had. So I've had that piece of property for, this would have been the third season. And sure enough, in, in the first two seasons, it was flooded, but I had right. gotten some camera inventory and little bitty like windows of it not being flooded. And sure enough, this deer was one of the first no. bucks that I had as a, as a, I pegged him at a three and a half year old then. And, okay. And, uh, and must I must be good at swimming. Yeah. yeah no kidding. <laughs> so it was, it was just neat. It was a neat deal. And that's cool. And I think if all goes well, we're getting ready to close. I actually sold that piece of property and getting ready to close on here in a few weeks. So we took two, two great bucks off of it. Scott's it's a great and, farewell. Yeah. Scott steer, but mature bucks. And, and, yeah. uh, it was an, it was, it was a good season. So Sweet. that kind of ended it for me. And I don't think there's the deer I was after Chaco Rocco just disappeared after gun mm. season. No idea what happened to him. Neighbor has never seen him. I, I, okay. you know, he could be on the duck clubs. Who, who knows? Could have been shot. I, sure. I just don't know. So, um, that kind of put the, the cherry on top of the season. And yeah. I killed two great deer and Scott killed a great buck and now Nolan killed a great buck. So I felt pretty good Can't for, for anything better. Yeah. For good, for good yeah. kills for the, for the team. Sweet. So, so what's Nolan doing with the, the skull? Yeah, I, boy, I didn't ask him what he was. I think he's doing a shoulder mount. He was Good. talking about that. I, I yeah, was hoping big, so. Biggest deer ever. I think he's doing a shoulder mount cool. is what he's doing. Yeah. So they were, uh, they, so ended up, you know, we field dressed the deer. They, they had drove separate so that we put him, loaded him up in his buddy's truck. They took him down and Kelly, my sister, Kim and her family were in town from Olathe and they were over at Kelly's that night oh. and it was their last night in town. So they all had, they got to big celebration, a big celebration cool. once he got home, of 
course, I I missed out on that because I I live forty five minutes north yeah, of where they live. Backtracking but, if you. But it was it was good, and so they dad was there, and you know they had a good time that night. So it's it's something that that we probably take for granted living in hunting families because I know whenever we killed something growing up, like everyone gathers around the pickup yeah. truck bed, and even neighbors come over and stuff. And yeah, not everyone has that. Like some people like they, they just learned how to hunt and they don't know anyone that does. And, you kill it, you're like, now what? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I've got friends that are like, I, if I kill something, Tim, can I call you? Because I don't know yeah. really what to do next. So I, and it's something that I, a lot of us take for granted that grew up hunting. Yeah, and it's a lot of work after you shoot one, so... It really you know, is. They had a long night ahead of them. Yep. But anyhow, so that's kind of my uh, my story for the um, the Christmas break. And it, it's it, time well spent. Yeah, it was. It, it ended out 2020 with a bang. It was all good. Sweet, yeah. sweet. I, I'd still kind of like to get Sophie a buck, but like I've got nothing on camera. I did. I was saddle hunting uh, over the break, and I saw a little eight that she would have loved to kill. Um, but I, it, it's just like this time of year, it's so hard. Like it, the conditions are brutal. Yeah, it's random. You, you may see a deer like a half hour before last light. And- you better have a food source to, to really have mm-hmm. a good chance. Otherwise, yep. you're kind of hoping that you catch them traveling. Exactly. You know, you have them dialed in traveling from one from bed to food, wherever that may be. But it sure helps having a good food source. And that's what we those biologic radishes. I was a little surprised because we had radishes for the first 50 yards and and biologic final forage for the the last uh you know maybe 100 yards okay. and they they still are hammering the radishes which i always thought was uh, more of an early season uh like october yeah you know once kind of gun season case. rolls around it starts to not be as palatable but i feel like we had a kind of a mild fall mm-hmm. and it's just now really getting cold where it's breaking down those sugars and i feel like maybe that's why they're hitting Could be. Them harder now yeah. Could be. um so anyways it was it all worked out well sweet all's well that ends well yep, that's right well how about we help out our buddy sean from pennsylvania with this week's question of the day Let's do it. All right. The question of the day is proudly brought to you by Plano Cases. Protect your passion. Hey, guys. This is Sean Owens calling from Schuylkill Haven, Pennsylvania. Yeah, me and my hunting partner, we're considering, uh, we're summit tree stand hunters, and we're uh, considering uh, different running gun systems, whether it's a lone wolf or maybe even a saddle. So we'd like to get your opinion on it. Thank you. Keep up the good work, guys. We'll see you. This seems like one you're going to have to answer, Tim. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Sean. If uh, if you want to answer, if you want to have one of your questions answered, just go to the show notes, click the link, and uh, it'll take you to a website where you can leave your voicemail. Simple and easy. Um, you know, I, I, I've i been playing around with the, the helium set from Hawk and I, I love it. Like the, the helium sticks, there's a, there's a four set. I think you can get them for like 130, 140 bucks. They're light. They sandwich together. They're flat. Um, and, and they'll get you probably 18 to 20 feet up in a tree, depending on how much space you put in between the rungs. Yeah. And then the saddle, the saddle weighs like three pounds. And, and I, I've, I've been experimenting with wearing it out to the stand or just putting it in my pack. Like a diaper. Exactly. Like, like, a, a, like, a, like a black <laughs> diaper. And it doesn't, it doesn't look the greatest when you're on the ground, but it's super comfortable when you're in the tree. But to know that like you, you're only carrying your sticks and then you're wearing your your saddle that's and then your bow like that that's all it takes and you can, you can get up into a lot of scraggly trees that like i've been the last two hunts i've been on i've been on there have been saddle hunts and i've been hunting in places where i've never been able to hunt before but i've wanted to because there just haven't been any good trees to get a, a traditional lock on stand up into so I, I i sean i would definitely check out the the hawk helium setup because that that to me and, and i know there are other saddle setups out there i can only speak to what i know and what i've used and so far I'm seeing that it's like it's really unlocking some parts of property that I haven't been able to hunt. What about a climber? If he, you know, if he's not comfortable with the saddle, what what's a good climber? He was saying he was using lone lone wolf climber, maybe. He said he was using a summit, but he was considering a lone wolf setup. And um, and climbers are climbers are nice. And I have the hawk warbird climber i think it folds flat and it's right around 20 pounds um and it's it's not bad 
it's just that like, if you're talking about run and gun, I guess it depends on like what kind of shape you're in. If you're going to break a sweat yeah. with that extra weight on your back, it's a little more noise because you got something clanking around. Um, so it really just depends on how much weight you want to carry. Like I, when, when I would take my Warbird in, I would strap my backpack to it and then strap the Warbird onto my back. So like I've got one hand free to carry my bow yeah, and it's not a bad setup, uh, but for ultralight, the, the Hawk helium saddle has been awesome. Cool. So there you go. That's just, that's one guy's opinion. Good luck, Sean. Heck yeah. Uh, wildlife word. Ooh-wee. That's brought to you by muddy outdoors, home of the highest quality products for serious hunters. Mr. Drury. All right. The pedicle is where the antler connects to a whitetail's skull. But what's the term for the enlarged gro- overgrowth of antler just above the pedicle and above the hairline of the deer? Mm. You know what I'm talking about like that yeah. knotty ring. Is it A, the velvet terminus, B, the calcium lump, C, Jason, or D, the burr? Well, you always hear people say uh, like burr sounds like it would kind of be it because that's that's always like the bumpiness down at the bottom Mm -hmm. i'm trying to think if you're gonna stump me with calcium lump (laughs) or velvet i'm going with burr that would be just going with burr that's probably wrong okay so you're going with d scott just weighed in offset he's saying d you guys are both right look at that congratulations it's the burr (laughs) <laughs> couldn't find the applaud. I would have done the fart noise, but I mean, to each his own. <laughs> Good job. Quick one. <laughs> Leaked out. Uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I hope, I know there are guys out there that still have tags unfilled and it's tough. Me. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, well, some people haven't killed anything. So oh, if, oh, if, you're in, if you're in that situation, I feel for you. Hopefully you're able to make something happen here. Mm-hmm. Seasons are winding down. Yeah. The, the biggest thing, I think you got to worry about them dropping their antlers. I know yeah. several guys have, have started to see you know, deer dropping and or shot a deer and went to recover it. And the, the antlers laying on this Kyle McClellan's son had killed a nice buck right. mm-hmm. uh, maybe a week ago. It was Christmas day. It was yeah, Christmas it's Eve, something like a couple that. Weeks now. And, uh, and sure enough, they went to recover it and both, both of them are laying there. So pretty crazy. Uh, so you got to watch out for that. Be careful. If you Identify your out. targets. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Some guys are on doe missions. I know last night I was watching, um, Mark, Mark has, uh, Johnny Morris and uh, JP Morris in camp in Iowa for the late muzz. Uh, and, and so th- they were talking about the night they had saw tons of deer. And uh, then I saw that the, the Lindsay's went live on Facebook and I was watching that last night while I was laying in bed and they killed da- Mr. David and Miss Wanda both killed great, great deer. And so okay. they, they were all talking about how well the deer moved up there last night, but they're sitting on big, pretty big food plots. Mm. And it just goes to show you, you know, if you like, uh, Trevor went to hunt the lease, uh, two, two, three nights ago, okay. he got skunked and late season. He went into a spot where late season, typically you'll see 40 or 50 deer, but the farmer totally changed the food mm. up there. And, and instead of having corner beans and even, even with him cutting that they we'd always still seeing, see them in there uh-huh. late season doing whatever they're doing, just nibbling on whatever growth is there. Well, this year, not nothing, not, they got skunked and that's, I mean, it just totally changed the DNA of the farm. There's millions it up up top instead of a corner or bean food source. And so I think it just goes to show you if you got food, Mark and Terry have talked about it, but they're not the only ones that everybody talks about it, that that no deer hunting late season. If you got food, you, you got deer and boy, if you don't, it's feast or famine. It really sucks. And I don't. Yeah. (laughs) It just, it's just a totally, you could, you could really be wasting your time if there's such a thing hunting. It's so just, just know that if you're still trying to fill your tag, you try to figure out what they're eating. Yeah. Or if Be you have there. a friend that has property that has food and maybe they'll let you on, hopefully someone throws yeah. you a bone. Yeah. But it, it's up. But we appreciate everyone listening. Appreciate everyone tuning in. Be sure to tune in next week. I don't know. At some point, I know we'll we'll end up talking about uh, Chinese knockoff products that are flooding the archery industry yeah. and really hurting not only hunters because they're typically substandard 
pieces of equipment, but also the industry at large. Yeah. So that, that's on an upcoming show. We also have a, a really awesome podcast slated that we filmed it's weeks ago. That's yeah. Top secret deal at Winchester. They're get, getting ready to unveil something new and, and uh, between arms and ammo and it's exciting, but we're waiting to get the green light. So hard to wait. <laughs> I know, you know, this year we don't have ATA show. We don't have shot show, no NWTF. So I, I, I'm just waiting to get the green light to say, Hey, they're, they're, they're officially launching it. We can launch the podcast with it. Should be in the next week or two, I would think. So we're, yeah, we're excited like to get, January. yeah, we're excited to get that out. So, yeah. so stay tuned. There you go. Something All right. Look forward to. Thanks for watching everybody. Till next time. Peace out. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's.